In this video, I'm going to show you how I took garden soil that looked like this and turned it into this. If you do enjoy, please make sure to subscribe. Let's get into it. All right, so first and most importantly in your soil is nutrients. Nutrients are a major component in soil. The three main nutrients that are, in, that are found in soil are phosphorus, potassium, and nitrogen. Nutrients are very important as they help your plants be able to grow nice and tall and produce nice fruits. The best way to test your soil for these nutrients is to get a soil test kit from many different companies that make them. When you receive your results back, one of two things will happen. The first is your nutrients will be okay, but in your case, if you clicked on this video, your nutrients are probably out of whack. So what they'll tell you to do is they'll tell you to put on a certain amount of the nutrient type that you're deficient in. And they like to go with chemicals because they can sell you on that. But in my personal experience, the best way to do that is to just add natural fertilizers. Now, natural fertilizers are good for two reasons. The first one is it's natural. They're easy to find, and it's the best option for your health. The second thing is they tend to stick in the soil better, and the soil tends to absorb it better. So natural fertilizers include manure, hay straw, grass clippings, leaves, compost, and then excess food waste. There is also another way to test if you are deficient in nutrients, and that would be to look at your plants themselves. If you're noticing that your plants are yellowish when they should be green, well, you're probably deficient in nitrogen. All right, so now that you've got nutrients established, let's talk about soil composition. There are three major components to soil composition. The first one is sand, silt, and clay. They are very important for root growth and overall plant productivity. On average, you should be looking at about 40% sand, 40% silt, and 20% clay. There are a couple of different ways to test your soil for these makeup types. The first is you could buy this another soil kit and you could have it tested in a laboratory. But for this step, there are easier ways and I'm going to go over those. The first is the ribbon test. Now I'm going to make a video on the ribbon test, but basically what it is, you take some soil and you mash it between your fingers and you form a ribbon. And depending on how fast that ribbon breaks, how it tells you how strong the soil is and what it's made out of. The second test and the easiest is just the observation test. So what I mean by that is when you get a big rainstorm, think about it. Does your soil hold the water for too long? Is that part flooded? Does it hold a lot of water? If that's the case, then you have a very clay-heavy soil and probably need to get that addressed with some sand. Does your soil not hold any water at all? Because that's a big, that's a big issue. In that case, you probably have a sandy soil. You want to lean more for the sandy. That's why you have the 40% sand and 20% clay. Because plants need good drainage, but they also need to be kept moist. Once you've figured out what your soil is made of, you have to go ahead and add what you're missing. So the best way to do that is just to add what you're missing. So if you have a high sandy soil, well then you're going to want to add some clay. And if you have a high clay soil, well then you're going to want to add some sand. The best place to find those resources is you can look online for like quarries and dig pits near you. And a lot of times they'll sell you bulk material at a pretty reasonable price. The third component to healthy soil is life. Now there are two major kinds of life in your soil. The first one is going to be animal life. So we're talking about worms, grubs, slugs, and insects. So insects like bees, ladybugs, and there are a few other types of insects, but those are your important ones. There's also microbial life. So different kinds of bacterias, and bacteria can be a good thing if it's the right kind and different kinds of viruses and diseases, which are not usually good. The reason life is so important in your soil is good for many reasons, but the first are aeration. Now, things like worms, as they dig holes through the soil, they create cavities and they create aeration in your soil. So you get a nice loose, crumbly soil, which is important so that oxygen can get to the roots of your plants. Things like ladybugs help to fight off other pests and things like honeybees help to pollinate your plants so that more of your flowers on your vegetable garden or flower garden end up turning into fruits and flowers. All right, so now with those three major components of soil, 
you should be able to go out and take action and do what I have recommended in the video so that you can increase soil. And those three things alone will probably double your plant yield if taken seriously. But now it's time for that secret tip. And that secret tip is going to be mulching over the winter, but it might not be what you think. Now, why would you mulch over the winter? Well, think about it. You have, depending on where you live, you have snow, rain, cold temperatures, and wind. Now, those four things can do some pretty tremendous things to your soil in just one season. They deteriorate your soil very harshly, especially when it comes to life in your soil. All that life does not want to stay up at the surface because it's cold and they... So that's why you'd mulch. Now, how to mulch? Well, you can do it a number of different ways, but I imagine most of you watching are watching this video because you are gardeners or you want to get into gardening. So I imagine most of you have a yard. And I imagine in that yard, you probably have some trees and grass. Well, that's how you do it. You take your leaves that you're probably not doing anything with anyways, and your grass clippings, and you put it about an inch or two thick on top of your garden beds. And what mulching does is it helps to keep that life in the soil over the winter. They might not be right at the top, but they're gonna be less far down, and it helps them work over the winter to continue to provide value for you. So if you do those simple things like mulching, then you could be miles ahead next spring compared to where you could be if you don't. All right, now we've gone over everything. So we've started with soil nutrients, so nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and the ways that you can check for those and improve them if they're not up to the right standard. We went over soil composition, what it should be, so we have sand, silt, and clay, and a few ways to check those and also to get them up to the proper level. And then we talked about soil life, so grubs, worms, insects, bacteria, and diseases and that sort of thing, and how to make sure that you have that for optimum soil efficiency. And with the secret tip of mulching over the winter, and it's time for you to take action and put those steps that I implemented for you into action and you should be miles ahead of where you were last year. I want to thank you for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next one.